15th chapter this morning. I want to preach to you, if I might, and I'm going to entitle my message this morning, A Living God. The Bible says, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. They have ears, eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is every one that trusteth in them. But listen to what the Word says. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help. And their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. Man, listen to this. He is mindful of us. He will bless us. <coughs> he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Wow, you talk about powerful. The word of the Lord, the Bible describes as quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I want to preach to you this morning, if I might, for a few moments. If you'd bow your heads and pray with me, let's ask Almighty God to help us this morning as we endeavor to minister His word. Father, we're thankful today for the opportunity to be in your house to worship you this morning. Lord, we're thankful for every individual that's in this church, Lord. No matter how many times they've been here, we're glad they're here. And we ask, Lord, that everyone in the sound of my voice, Lord, is blessed this morning. We ask you today, Lord, that you would touch every heart and every ear, that they would be able to receive exactly what you'd have them receive. Uh, Lord, if there be that one person in this church this morning that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, before they walk out of here, they've come to the knowledge of you, Lord, and they've given their heart and their life over to you. Uh, but, Lord, I ask this morning as I endeavor to preach the words you've laid upon my heart. Uh, Lord, I can't do it by myself, but with your anointing, I can do it. Uh, and I ask you, Lord, to use me and to preach through me and to cause me to say exactly what needs to be said this morning. Uh, for, Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus. And everyone that's uh, saved this morning, uh, would you shout amen? amen? Serving a living God. I was sitting and, and, and thinking of the, the message and my heart was troubled when I thought of all the people in this world right now that if Jesus would come back, would die lost. And I began to think in my mind, and, and, and the Lord was dealing with my heart. There are so many folks that have put their trust and faith in so many different gods throughout time. Let me tell you what. Israel was one of the worst uh, nations there was that no matter where they were, no matter what land they were in, uh, for one reason or another, they would always turn to the God of that land. Even after serving the living God, uh, and after they saw the very miracles of God in their life every day, uh, it seemed like every time you turned around, uh, they were serving the prophets of Baal, or, or Baal, the, they were doing the, the grove, they were doing anything and everybody they could, uh, and I'm sitting here asking myself, why in the world would anybody want to serve a God that can't answer your prayer? Why would anybody want to put your trust in somebody who's dead? Can I get an amen on that one? 
What do you mean? Folks, every God that's being served in this world except the, the I am that we're serving is dead. They've all died. They're all men that somebody has elevated up into the, the, the realm of being a God and they died and guess what? Uh, they stayed dead. The God that we're serving, who sent his son Jesus Christ to this earth, uh, and he took on the form of man, and while he was here, he endured the temptations that you and I endure. Uh, he was absolutely, folks, uh, he was happy, he was sad, he was tired, uh, he was upbeat, he was all the things that you and I go through. Uh, and he actually went through the very, uh, the very sorrow of the cross, uh, and he died, he gave his life. Uh, you notice I said he gave his life. Uh, nobody took his life, uh, he gave it for you and I. And on that cross, as he gave his life, uh, and he looked up and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, and they took that sword and they pierced his side. Uh, and he gave up the ghost uh, and they put him in that tomb. Uh, but three days later, he came back. He arose. Uh, he lives forevermore, the word says. Uh, I'm going to tell you, Muhammad didn't do it. Uh, Hare Krishna didn't do it. Uh, Buddha didn't do it. Uh, none of these other gods that this world is serving, uh, none of them are alive. But our God is alive forevermore. You see, the word says, eyes have they, but they don't see. Let me tell you what. God knows where I am and what I'm going through all the time. He sees everything that's going on in my life. Uh, the Bible says they have ears, but they hear not. Uh, you ever talk to somebody and you know they ain't listening? Isn't it frustrating? When you're looking at somebody and they're looking right at you, they have no idea what you just said. That's the way I feel sometimes when I'm preaching. They have no idea what you just said. And when you need somebody to come, they can't come. Let me tell you what. That's the God this world is serving right now. You know what? Uh, I, I was watching, uh, uh, and this week, uh, and, and in fact, uh, I, I am very much, uh, I, I am so in, enthralled with the idea of all these people that are willing to give their life for Muhammad. He's dead. And they are, man, they're dedicated. They will walk inside a building like this and they'll blow themselves up and take you with them. Hoping that when it's all said and done, they're going to inherit what everybody's told them. Let me tell you what. If Christians would get half as dedicated to God as a lot of these other religions are to their gods, man, the devil wouldn't stand a chance. If people would understand uh, the God that we're serving is alive, but not just alive, uh, he's alive forevermore. Uh, he died one time, folks, uh, but he came back to life, and he's never going to die again. Uh, he was in the tomb. They thought they had him. Uh, they thought they'd overcome him, uh, and he went to the depths of the earth, uh, and he took away from the devil the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Uh, and I'm telling you, if the devil knew uh, what he knew, knows right now, he'd have never allowed him to be killed. Uh, because you know what? The sacrifice that was paid was paid for you and me uh, and when he took the keys to death and hell uh, and the grave and all these things uh, he took the victory that each and every one of us are going to have one of these days uh, that folks if we die in this life uh, we know that we're going to live again uh, if we don't die and the Lord comes back we don't have to worry about it because we're going to be resurrected out of this place uh, and I think about that uh, man if I'm serving a God that's dead I don't have that promise uh, but I'm serving a God who's alive uh, and because he's alive I know today that when I I pray he hears my prayers uh, I know that when I seek him uh, he's gonna I'm gonna be able to find him where he's at uh, he is not some God that can't be touched with the feeling of our infirmities uh, but I'm telling you uh, he knows more about you and I than I know and that you know uh, he knows more about what we need than what we know uh, you see this God is alive uh, he's not dead uh, he is not in some grave somewhere uh, he is not decayed but he is sitting on the right hand of the Father You see, people, I don't understand. Well, how do we know it? It's called faith. Believing. Well, I don't have faith. Somebody says, everybody's got faith. Everybody's got it. Just some people don't use it. But you've all got it. Let me ask you something. I use this, and this is probably the easiest explanation of faith that I can ever come up with. How many of you are breathing? About five of you. How many is breathing? 
What are you breathing? Huh? Oxygen. How many of you see it? If you can see the air you're getting ready to breathe, you best not be breathing it. Come on. Take a deep breath. Some of your lungs ain't seen that much air in a long time. Did you see the air? Did you believe that when you took an inhale that the air was going to go in? You didn't see it? You couldn't touch it? But yet you believed it was there. And without any kind of hesitation, when you inhaled, you knew that the air was going to go in there. Hello. Hello. That's called faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, what do you mean, Pastor? I didn't realize I had faith. I didn't realize that this stuff was like it. Let me tell you what. More people, if they would understand that every day you are walking by faith in ways that you don't even realize it, and as Christians, we know that every day we're trusting in God in times that we're not even real. How many of you have ever driven down the highway, and you looked up and something was getting ready to happen, and all of a sudden it went the other way, and you were okay? How many ever seen that happen? That was a hand of God moving in your life, folks. Uh, that was faith that you have in God that when you get in that car and drive down that road, uh, that he's going to be with you. Why? Because he said the angels of the Lord and camp around about those that love him, that fear him. Uh, and as you're walking down the road or you're doing the things you're doing, uh, you have faith that God's going to take care of you. Uh, how many of you have ever had a need and you didn't worry about it because you knew some way, somehow, uh, that need was going to be met? I'll tell you why. Uh, because you had faith to believe that this God that we're serving is alive. Uh, and when he said He'll supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, you don't hesitate. You don't worry about it. But you believe he's going to do it and you go on. You see, this God that we're serving that is alive. All that description that I just read for you about the gods of the world. They can't hear. They can't see. They can't touch. They can't speak. They can't walk. They can't do anything that somebody alive can do, but our God can. How many knows he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-hearing, all-present God in this world? If you're dead, you can't do that. But our God is alive, and he's alive forevermore. The Word of God says this. He says, he which was, which is and which is to come, the Almighty. And we're looking at all the things, Jeff, in this world that are going on right now. And I'm going to tell you what. This world is it's pitiful. I mean, it's pitiful. The things that are happening in this world, in this country, in people's lives. And it's all because too many are trying to serve a God who can't do anything. And if they would come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ in their life, they would find uh, that in the midst of all this turmoil, there's still a peace. In the midst of all these problems, there's still a present help in our time of trouble. But I don't understand why things happen. Let me tell you what, all I know is this. Uh, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Uh, he never said it would be easy. Uh, he never said it would always be pleasant. But he said, I'll call something good to come out of everything you'll ever go through. Uh, and I have learned from experience, even in the darkest times of life, uh, that if you'll put your trust and faith in God, uh, he will not only carry you through it, uh, but he'll call something good to come about uh, because of your faithfulness to God. Uh, and if you look down through those scriptures and it talks uh, about how these gods can't do this, things. Uh, but then it began to describe to us what our God does. Uh, it says, you know what? He's going to bless Israel. Uh, he's going to bless the house of Aaron. Uh, you say, well, I, I'm not an Israelite. Uh, I'm not a part of the house of Aaron. No, uh, maybe you're not. Uh, but those that fear the Lord, he's going to bless too. Uh, I want you to know God has given us a promise uh, that he's going to go with us. Uh, in fact, he went on to say this, I'll go with you even to the ends of the earth. Uh, I'll be there. I'll do what needs to be done in your life. 
life. Uh, if you'll trust me and believe me. Uh, oh, I, I don't understand. I, I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, there's times I looked up and said, okay, God, uh, any time you want to take care of this, take care of it. You ever been there? <laughs> I've actually looked up to heaven and I've hollered at God and said, hey. You mean you hollered at God? Man, I'm glad he's a patient God. I said, hey, there ain't nothing good can come out of what's going on in my life. You ever been there? Nothing good can happen because of this. You know, even though the word says it is, I was telling God it wasn't. He put his arms around me and he assured me. He said, I got this. And a little farther down the road, you look back and you found out, yeah, God had it. God did it. God took care of it. And God caused something good to happen because of it. I'm going to tell you what. God's word is truth. It is absolute. If God said it, if this Bible, uh, if this word says, anybody got a Bible? Anybody got, hold your Bible up, would you? If it's written in that book, you can count on it. Hello. If it's written, well, but, but what if it's not? Let me tell you, if it's not written in here, don't be counting on it because it ain't going to happen. But if it's in here. In fact, when the devil was tempting Jesus in the wilderness, he said this, it is written. He came back at him with the word. I'm looking at all these college kids and they're thinking, oh, Lord, huh? we have to look at books all week. Are we supposed to look at the Bible on the weekend? Yep. Moms and dads, high school kids. All you people, you need to know what the Word says. How can you accept the promises of God if you don't know what they are? Huh? How can you know that God's going to forgive you if you're a sinner? Huh? If you call upon the name of the Lord, if you don't know what the Word says. Huh? Well, how, how can they know unless they hear? How can they hear unless a preacher preaches? I'm going to do that. Huh? And I'm going to preach to the lost, the hope of Jesus Christ. Huh? But once you become saved, the Bible says you're to study to show yourself approved unto God. Huh? A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What that means is this. Huh? You need to know what that word says. Huh? You need to stand on what that word says. Huh? And no matter what anybody else tells you know this uh, your God is alive he's well uh, he's in control and even though the world seems like it's in utter chaos uh, God is ordering our steps huh do we trust God do we believe I love the song we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. He's coming back. God is getting ready to look over to his son, Sammy, and he's going to say this. You know what? Enough's enough. Go get the church. Bring them home. Get them out of that mess. I look around me. We got a good crowd this morning, yet we still got a lot of folks that are out. And I'm thinking to myself, there are people all over this world that don't have the freedom to come to church as you and I do. And if they go to church, they go to church with the absolute knowledge of knowing they may lose their life for serving our God. I'm going to tell you right now, we take a lot of things for granted. To be able to sit here. Folks, listen to me. How many of you have been in church for a lot of years? Let's say 40 years. How many of you have been in church 30, 40 years? A lot of you have. How many of you remember back years ago when you went to church and churches didn't have padded pews? How many remember that? They didn't have carpeted floors. How many of you are old enough to remember those old sawdust floors? Uh-huh. And when you sit down, there wasn't no air conditioning. How many remember when there wasn't no air? Some of you are young and remember that. 
if you were lucky, you would be able to sit close to a box fan and somebody wouldn't be sitting real close to you so you wouldn't have to sweat because they were sweating on you. Oh, now come on, you all aren't so proper that you've never been sweat on in church. Anybody here ever prayed and snot run down your nose? Oh, preacher is sick this morning. He's talking about snot running. Let me, you know what I like about snot running down people's noses? If you are so engrossed in getting close to your gods, you don't care how you look. That if you're slobbery, snot's running, your hair is messed up. If you don't care what anybody else thinks. Are y'all hearing me? Well, I can't, I can't get emotional. Somebody may see me cry. Who cares? Well, I don't want my, my makeup a run. We don't have that problem, do we, Kenny? And I'm sitting here thinking, we have got so proper in our walk with Jesus that we don't want somebody to look at us and think, you know what? They're crying. Or, look, their hair ain't just right. Oh, God forbid that they would get down and pray because they may not be able to get up. They're so big. I, I, I didn't mean that looking at you, Fran. Well, what's somebody going? If I go up front, somebody's going to think I've sinned and I backslid. Who cares what people think? We've got to get back to that, folks. We're serving a living God. He wants you as you are. You don't have to change before you come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and let him do the changing. Put your pride aside and quit worrying what somebody... Let me tell you what. If I need help, I know where to go and I don't care what anybody else thinks. I know to get on my knees and to call upon my God, and my God will hear and answer my prayer. Uh, if I got tears flowing down my face, that's okay. Uh, if I get so, uh, so engrossed that I don't care that I'm slobbering and snots are running, I don't care. Uh, folks, I know where my help comes from. And my God is a living God that knows uh, everything there is to know about me. And sometimes uh, I've got to get myself down to the point uh, that I've humbled myself uh, and not caring what anybody else thinks, uh, what anybody else sees, what anybody else wants. Uh, and understand this, uh, when I call upon my living God, uh, I'm calling because I know he's going to hear in my answer my prayers. Uh, when I begin to turn my face, uh, as Hezekiah did, against the wall uh, and begins to call upon his God, uh, he was getting ready to die. Uh, and God said, okay, I've heard your prayer. I'm going to extend your life. God can do anything, folks, if we allow him to do it. There is nothing that the God we're serving is not capable of doing if we allow him to do it. But, folks, we got to quit worrying about what everybody else, well, I don't want to offend anybody. Chances are you're offending them anyway. Think about it a minute. Well, I'm a Christian, so I'm not going to do that stuff. Well, they're already offended. Because they want you to do everything. Live however they live. You ever have somebody? I remember back years ago when I was in school. And they knew I was a Christian. And they tried their best to get me to come to the keggers. Nope, not going. Well, just come anyway. You don't have to partake. I know what they'd have done. They'd have slipped something to me. Look, folks, Paul and I would be nasty drunks. That's what Scott tells her, said, Paula, you'd be a nasty drunk if you ever got drunk. She would be. She'd be one of those people up on the table swinging her shirt.
That's the first time I've ever seen her that embarrassed. Scott said, I didn't say that. No, but he was thinking it. Because you're usually opposite what you normally are. Jeff there should say, uh-huh. We know that this old world is in a mess. And it's because they're serving all these dead gods. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't need meth. I don't need heroin. I don't need cocaine. I don't need Jack or whatever it is that you're drinking or need to drink or think you need to drink or think you need to take. I don't need that stuff. And I'll tell you why. I have found the peace that passeth understanding. I have found the joy unspeakable and full of glory. I don't need a crutch to get through this life because I got a God that will carry me when I can't walk. I don't need something to help me forget uh, because I got a God who will wipe away all my tears, all my sins, uh, all my transgressions and give me a new life. Uh, I don't have to worry about what everybody else thinks. All I got to worry about is this. Uh, Am I living the way God wants me to live? Uh, Am I doing what is right in the eyes of God? Uh, And if I am, folks, I want you to know uh, I've got an assurance uh, that in this life uh, I may not have what all other people think I need to have, uh, but as long as I've got Jesus, I've got it all. Uh, If I may not have uh, the wealth and the fame, and I'll be honest with you, I don't want the fame. Uh, I don't want everybody to know who I am. Uh, I don't want uh, all the things the world has to offer. Uh, I am satisfied uh, with the Jesus that I'm serving. Uh, And I want you to know, uh, if after this life, uh, when I stand before the Lord, uh, I don't have to worry about what I've done, what I've said, uh, what I've been involved in. Uh, When I look to Him, and He looks at me, uh, and He says these words, well done, good and faithful servant. Servant, uh, enter into everlasting life. I want you to know uh, it's worth it all uh, to serve this living God. Uh, that when you die, if you die, you've got the hope of eternal life. Uh, if you go in the rapture, you know you've already made it. Folks, uh, let's not get caught up in what the world says, uh, but let's get caught back up in Jesus. Amen. The Bible says this, and I'm going to close. It's hard to close sometimes. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Well, pastor's looking down his nose at people that are drunks and drug addicts. If you think that's the case, go talk to that man right there and ask him if pastor anybody here looked down their nose at him when he walked in this place a drunk. Not a one looked down their nose at that man when he walked in here and had to have somebody vouch that he was even here. How far God has brought that man. (laughs) How far he has brought him. Let me tell you what, and I know I say things like this all the time. But the most profound words I ever heard that man tell me was this. I used to be known as a drunk. Now I'm known as a child of God. You talk about a hope and a promise and a living God that can change somebody who every day had to have something in his body to get him through the day called alcohol. Uh, He couldn't make a day without it. Now, he don't even need it, don't even want it, don't even desire it, uh, and knows uh, that he is free. Uh, He is absolutely delivered. Uh, He is set free from the things that world had him bound in. I'm telling you, this is a living God. Well, I've never done that. Thank God. Thank God you've never done it. Very few have never done it. I tell people, I'm 51 years old and I've never tasted one drop of alcohol in my life. You've got to 
to be kidding me. You tell me you have never had a drink. I've never wanted a drink. Two reasons. That nasty drunk syndrome. And the enforcer. <laughs> Folks, I'm just telling you. If I would have ever come home and I'd been drinking... I don't care how old I was. She'd have beat me within a half inch of my life. Well, your mom wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, she would have. I'm telling you, I'm 51 years old. If I came home drunk, she would still beat me. And I thank God for that. There was a fear that I knew that if I did that, uh, it'd be my luck uh, that I'd die lost. Or if I didn't die lost, uh, I'd have to face it when I got home. And I'm going to tell you right now, I wasn't willing to do that. Well, you're bragging. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you I was smart. Because I knew that I knew that I knew there were consequences to pay for the actions that everybody else was trying to get me to do. I don't need those actions. I don't need those consequences. The only wine I'm going to drink is that wine from above. That hope that Jesus has given unto me. And one of these days, folks, <laughs> we're going to inherit the eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. In closing this morning, musicians, if you would, there's a choice that everyone has to make. And that choice is this believe in the gods that have eyes, ears, mouths, feet, but they can't see, hear, talk, or move. Or believe in the living God, which made the heavens and the earth. That not only can hear, not only can see, not only can talk, not only moves, but also answers every single day. I want to be blessed of my God. And I am blessed. Folks, you know how blessed we are. We could be buried underneath 40 inches of snow right now. And we didn't get anything hardly. Thank God for that. We about got January licked. Think about it. We about got it licked. It's almost spring. Somebody will be shouting glory right now. I got a lady at work says, I want the snow. I said, move. <laughs> the older I get, the less I want. I want warm. I want it to be pretty so we can get out and do stuff again. How about you? I want it to be where people can start coming to church because they're not afraid of the weather. How about you? I'll tell you what I'm ready for. I'm ready for God to have his way in your life, my life, and in this church. And let's take this to a higher height and deeper depth that he has for us. Folks, it's only going to happen one way. Put your trust and your faith in this living God. It's your choice. Nobody can make it for you. Oh, we'd like to. <laughs> I'd love to be able to go up and touch everybody, and the minute I touch them, they're saved. If water saved everybody, I'd be drowning people every week. They don't do it. Only one thing saves anyone. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
Would you stand with me this morning? Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around for a moment, if you would. You're standing here under the sound of this preacher's voice this morning. You've listened to what I've said. And in your mind, you know that what I've said is truth. You know you need to put your trust and faith in God. But for whatever reason, you have never given your heart to Him. You have not asked Him to forgive you of your sins. Your life may be an absolute wreck right now. And you may think, you know what? There is absolutely nothing that can fix what I've done. And I want you to know this morning, no, I can't fix it. You can't fix it. But there's a God that we serve that can fix it. You're standing here in the sound of my voice, and you've listened to this old preacher this morning. You say this, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. I need him to fix me, and I need him to give me the hope and the help and the peace that I need in my life. Would you slip your hand up right now, anyone in this church? I need Jesus. There are folks sitting here this morning. Thank you for that hand. Thank you so much. There are people sitting here this morning right now that there's a struggle going on in your life this very moment. And that struggle is you want to do good, but there's something trying to hold you back. Something you've done, something you've said, something you've experienced, something that's happened to you. But I want you to know right now, we are serving a God who can turn your life around and give you the hope that you so much need right now. Would you slip your hand up right now? Pastor, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Would you slip it up? Maybe you're standing here this morning. You say, you know what? I need to get serious with God. I need to quit worrying about what everybody else is thinking, what everybody else is doing. And I need right now to let God know, I'm going to be serious with you, God. I'm going to do what you want me to do. Would you slip your hand up right now? Thank you for those hands. My goodness, thank you for those hands. Anyone else right now? Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? 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 Come on. I need to make God number one in my life. I need to be serious with God. Anyone else right now, slip your hand up. Nobody's going to know it. You and me and Almighty God. Anyone else, come on. I'm going to ask you this morning, do you really believe, do you really believe that God is able? Do you believe that God is ready and God is willing to work in your life. This morning, you raised your hand that you need Jesus in your life. I'm going to ask you if you would to get out of your seat and come down to this front with me as we pray together and ask the Lord to become Lord of your life. Would you step out of your seat and come down here with me? Would you step out? 